All right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, we're talking about all the different products we reviewed in 2023, what's still working, what we still use, and what the plans are. But before we get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure you hit that bell icon down below. That way you get notified every time I upload. That way you don't miss any of this awesome cycling content we got on this channel. So far into the video, we are going over all the products we reviewed in 2023. And I'll tell you, it was a lot. There's quite a few videos made in 2023 reviewing all sorts of products from kind of out of the box to more normal stuff. But everything all around, we reviewed it. And we're gonna go over it today. I'm gonna tell you what the current status of those are and whether it's something I still use or whether it's something I plan on getting rid of. So let's go ahead and we'll start off with number one. So number one is the big green guy right back there. That's my fat bike. That is the first review we did this year. That was after we finished up our build about a year ago exactly today. So that bike back there is my Mongoose Beast. It's probably the cheapest fat bike you can buy. It's a steel, single speed coaster brake fat bike kind of a weird combination yes but that bike we built up over the last winter and that's what we got left there and i kind of did my review on it that bike is amazing i love that bike for a super cheap inexpensive fat bike that we built up for under 200 bucks essentially you get a nice solid fat bike to ride around with and now that it's january again we're just waiting on some snow to come down which supposedly is supposed to happen today we'll see what happens we're waiting on some snow to rip that bike around there's one change we're making to it, and you're gonna see that in next week's video, so I'm gonna actually make that one change to that bike. But 99% of the bike is dialed and fun and amazing. I love the way that bike rides. So if you're looking for an inexpensive fat bike just to get into it, Mongoose Beast is by far the way to go. Then we moved on and we went into the road bike. We did a full rebuild on my road bike this year and redid all the first the whole drivetrain on it. And with that, we even redid the tires. And with the tires, we went from our Continental Gator skins that I've been riding for years and years and years and years. We went to some Continental GP 5000s, which I had heard were a really good tire and something I wanted to try out. So we stuck those on the road bike and let me tell you, those GP 5000s versus the Gator skins, they make a huge difference. I'm no longer in an area where I really have to worry about getting flats every single ride. So having a tire that has a little bit less rolling resistance than the Gator skin, but not as much flat protection, it makes a big difference. I wouldn't have thought that making that kind of difference, especially since I went up three millimeters in width, I feel like I can ride faster and I roll better with the GP 5000s than I did with a 25 millimeter Gator skin. So. Makes a big difference. We're looking for a nice set of tires. Continental always makes great tires out there. So check out the GP 5000s if you're looking for a nice road bike tire. Still have them on a road bike, still loving them. They're working great for me. Then I started looking at my fleet back here and realized I'd gotten to the point where I think three of them didn't really have pedals anymore. They just kind of had, they were nothing. They were just bare cranks. So I went, well, I need a cheap set of pedals I can just buy and buy a bunch of and just throw them on bikes and have fun with those. And I didn't really want to go with a just a cheap pair of plastic pedals. I wanted something a little bit nicer, like a nylon pedal with some pins in it, just to make it a little bit nicer to ride. So I went on Amazon, our favorite place out there, and I bought some Puroma pedals. And I had never heard of those before. When I bought them, they were $11 for a set of pedals, which is was insanely cheap. They were by far the cheapest pedal I could find out there that would kind of fit the bill. Now I tore those apart, re-greased them, put it together, and there were definitely some noticeable differences between those and like a pair of race face chesters that are kind of higher up there. But I said, hey, 11 bucks, bought three sets of them. Let's try them out on some bikes and we'll see how they work. So I put them on my wife's Ariel, my wife's mountain bike has a set, and then for Sea Otter, I ran a set on the Superfly as well. And I kind of like them. They worked pretty good for an $11 flat pedal. They were great. Now I haven't taken them on any kind of crazy mountain bike trails or crazy drops or anything like that, just because I ride clipless all the time on my mountain bike, but who knows, they might stand up to that. It's just not my cup of tea, but for around town riding and around the area riding, they were great. So cheap pedals, works pretty good still using them on all the bikes. After that, I got into mountain bike season. It started to get to the point where I wanted to ride my mountain bike more and more. However, after the winter, I popped my mountain bike and my dropper post would slowly sink down all the way to the bottom. And it wouldn't hold its weight. And it wouldn't hold itself all the way up anymore. And that is the that was the cheapest dropper post at the time. That was the Trans-X dropper post before they really had any other dropper post. It was just the Trans-X dropper post. And I had that thing essentially since I started my YouTube channel. So that time, it was like five years I'd had that dropper post. So I mean, for a, I think it was a hundred bucks for that dropper post. 
it was well worth it. I got five years out of a dropper post that was super cheap, got great videos. You guys seem to like seeing the cheapest dropper post out there. So what we did, we went ahead and bought another cheapest dropper post, the second cheapest dropper post you can buy, and that was the Brand X dropper post, the Ascend 2, I think is what it was called. And I put that on that bike. It's kind of a weird setup. It's an externally routed 27.2 dropper post, so it's kind of a weird setup with a, it was 100 millimeters of travel, 110, something along those lines. And it, it fits, it works. It's almost identical to my old Transx dropper post and it works perfectly fine. I put that on that bike, rode it this whole year, looking forward to riding it more and it works. So really ultimately the thing is you could spend a hundred bucks on a dropper post, get five years out of it and then just upgrade to whatever the newest thing is now and you spend another hundred bucks. So for me, the cheap dropper posts work great, especially for an older bike that just doesn't have internal routing, anything like that. A cheap dropper post, Seems to work great. Then we had the chance to go to the Sea Otter Classic in Monterey, California last year. And when we went there, we saw all sorts of cool products and all sorts of cool things that we wanted to check out. And we got the chance to try out here at the garage. And first one, of course, is this guy right behind me, this Poseidon Redwood. I had a chance to meet with Poseidon and their budget-friendly options. They have to make it so someone like me or someone like you can get into cycling and get a really solid bike for the price. And so we were able to build this bike out of the box, try it out in this factory form, and of course, make some changes as we went on through the year. But if you're looking for a best bang for the buck gravel bike, the Poseidon Redwood is by far the best choice you can make out there or any other Poseidon bikes. But the Poseidon Redwood makes a great all around, do everything gravel bike. I love this bike. It's why it's still here, it's why it's behind me. And we've made upgrades on it over the years, which we'll talk about later, they're all on this list. Then we gotta try out a cool garage door opener. And some of you guys made fun of me on that video and I thought it was pretty funny how you did. But it's essentially a garage door opener for your bike. It's made by 12 speed products and it mounts up on the stem cap of your bike right up here. It allows you to program out to your garage door with two buttons. You're able to push button and the garage door opens, the push button and the garage door closes. So you're able to exit and enter your garage while using your bike. So you don't have to carry around a garage door opener. You don't have to go walk your bike around your house or whatever you gotta do. You don't have to deal with that. It's all on your bike ready to go. Now I still have that, that's on my road bike is where that's at. So it's currently inside of my trainer. I wish I could mount it on my gravel bike, but it does add a smidge to the top of your top cap. It adds about a spacer, a normal spacer to the top of your top cap, which makes it too high and it hits my Garmin now. So I can't use it on a gravel bike, sadly, but it is a great product if you're looking for something, some way to just open and close your garage door on your bike, not have to carry something separate, not have to deal with a keypad, not have to deal with keys, any of that, it's all on here ready to go. Then we checked out the Fidlock product. So Fidlock, if you don't know what Fidlock is, I first of all, check out my video on Fidlock. But Fidlock, they make these little mounts right here. And these little mounts are essentially magnetic and clip activated. So these mounts here, they essentially have different attachments you can put on them. Water bottle, bags, tool kits, all can fit on those different mounts. And you can interchange them. And when they're off, it's essentially just a smooth surface mount there. And it doesn't get in the way of like a standard water bottle cage well. We went ahead and stuck that on my wife's aerial. And really the purpose of putting it on the, her aerial was so that it'd be simpler for her to pop the water bottle off, get a drink, and then drop it back on while she's riding. So she doesn't have to look down, aim for a cage. It kind of just clicks on and magnetically attaches. And she has loved that thing. And I like the ones I put on the fork of the Poseidon Redwood here. Just makes it easier to throw a bag on there if I need to. And it just lets me take it on and off super easy. Don't have to worry about it. And it looks really clean even with the bags off. Next up, we went ahead and tried out these titanium water bottle cages here from Life Goods. And I had never done a titanium cage before. I've done stainless steel, I've done carbon fiber, I've done just your basic aluminum cages, but I'd never done titanium. And it's kind of silly to have titanium cages on an aluminum bike. But I thought, hey, that sounds really cool. Let's give them a shot, see how awesome they are. And we put two of those cages on here and the adjustability on the cages allowed me to be able to fit two cages on here, as well as a bag up here, and still be able to pop 20 France water bottles in here, not a problem at all. No marking up on my water bottles, no marking up on the cages. They work great, they look great. Can't argue with that. So if you're looking for an awesome water bottle cage, Life Goods titanium cages are a great way to go. And this year we also gotta start working with Road ID. So Road ID is these bracelets and these tags here that essentially you can put your emergency contact information on. So in my case, I have my name, my birthday, my emergency contact, city, state, country. I got my allergy, blood types on there. All that is on here. So in the case that I was to get in an accident or crash on my bike and not be able to respond verbally, it's all right there on my band and someone can be able to get in contact with what they need to and know them and find the information that they need in order to get me treated properly. They're really nice to have. They work great just in your everyday life. Who can argue with that? It's just a bracelet you can either wear every day. You can wear it just when you're out for a ride or a run. 
and put it on your bike, put it on your shoe, whatever you want to do, you can make it happen. Just a great way of just being safe and having a secure peace of mind. That's something that I've used in the past. And being able to work with Road ID now, it's great just to be able to share this awesome product with you guys. So next up, we had a chance to try out a couple different handlebars this year, and some were interesting, some were kind of normal, but ultimately they were both really cool. So first off, we'll start with the Redshift Kitchen Sink Handlebar System for the Poseidon Redwood here. Now this is a 53 centimeter bar measured hood to hood, so it is a very, very wide drop bar in terms of thing. I have seen some wider now, however, at the time, of, at the time I recorded this video, 53 centimeter was as wide as you could find. And that makes a big difference for people who are like me or kind of broad shouldered. It, it makes a difference being able to kind of spread out as well as get extra leverage when you're turning off road. I ride this bike off road and pretty much treat it like a drop bar mountain bike sometimes. And this makes a big difference, especially when I have wide handlebars on my mountain bike and essentially the widest handlebars you can ethically get on a road bike. These are like 10 centimeters wider than my road bike handlebars. I really like them. I like the extra endurance loop on here. I like the extra padding here, this extra kind of flare out here, as well as the grips on the end. The grips on the end are probably my favorite part. I like the feel of those in the drops. You feel super secure, super solid. Not gonna have a problem. So if you're looking for one of the best gravel bike handlebars out there, the Redshift Kitchen Sink is the way to go. Still use that bar, love the handlebars on there. Then we tried one of the weirdest handlebars I've ever done, and that's on the fat bike back there. And that's the Pachier Bamboo Handlebars. That's right, bamboo handlebars. If you haven't seen that video, that's one you want to check out. So past year is made in New Zealand, so way over across the pond. Over in New Zealand, they make laminated bamboo handlebars. Essentially made for bike touring is what their main focus is. Now, of course, Fat Bike not exactly a bike touring machine, but for me, that's what fit kind of the bill of a comfortable bamboo handlebar. And the big deal is they flex and they're able to absorb any kind of impact. It feels like you have a minor suspension fork, but you don't. Your bars actually flex a little bit as you ride. It's definitely an interesting feeling to get used to. However, once you've ridden them for a while, it's really nice. I don't really want to go to a different bar on that bike just because it's super comfortable. If you're into bike touring or commuting or anything along those lines, the past year bamboo handlebars, pretty cool to have. They also are a statement. When you walk, when you ride by with those, people stare at those because they're bamboo. Most people are accustomed to black bars on a bike. Those aren't, those aren't black, those are bamboo. So, they draw attention, I like it. Fat bike already draws attention, but it makes it more, it makes it draw even more attention. So, bamboo handlebars, still use them, still use them, not changing those anytime soon. Then at the end of the year, we tried a couple different products that were different than what we've done on this channel before. Number one, we tried out the Junior Emergency Cassette Tool. If you've never seen that before, it's essentially an emergency cassette tool. that lets you remove your cassette if you're out on the trail, you break a spoke, get something that's behind there. Whatever that may be, it lets you remove the cassette with just a small tool about that big. And you can just make that happen right on the trail, right on the side of the road, no problem at all. That tool has earned its place in the pouch on my Poseidon Red one, and it will stay there until I need to use it. Hopefully never. But it's going to stay in that pouch until I, till it needs to be used. Works great. I was impressed by it. If you're looking for something really inexpensive to take your set on and off, that's a great little tool to have. And then really the last thing I reviewed was a gigantic bike storage rack. And that was from Deer Famey. They sent that rack out to me. That's an eight bike storage rack, hangs up by the wheels, and has hooks on the side for helmets, gloves, whatever you want. Obviously, it didn't make it in here. In my video, I said maybe I'll try and make it work in my garage. It just didn't work in my garage. It just takes up a lot of room for the space that I have. It just didn't work with the configuration I need. Now, if I only had to have one car in here like my truck, and I had this whole space open, that bike rack would work great. I have to put two cars in here. I have my, my, I have my truck and my wife's car, and I got bikes and I have work fenched, all this stuff. I, I need to be able to organize my space very efficiently to get everything to fit in here, especially with how many bikes I have. So it just didn't quite work with the space I have in here. However, I'm still using that rack. It's actually in the back. I use it to store bikes and I'm working on project bikes, bikes that need repairs all are back there, and this just makes it kind of more organized in the back area where they used to sell, be kind of leaning up against the house. They're now on that rack. So, gives me a spot to use that, still use it, works great. We're gonna test it out during the winter here. See how rusty it gets, because it is a steel rack, I believe it's powder coated, but we'll see how it holds up over the winter with the snow and the, with the snow and ice and all that stuff. So, still using that, it's a great option for someone with a small apartment that just has like a single garage, we're looking to store a bunch of bikes in kind of a smaller space. So those are ultimately the products we reviewed in 2023. Again, big old list there. And ultimately this year, I think we reviewed some pretty solid stuff. I kind of narrowed my scope down to stuff that I would actually use myself. And pretty much everything on here I use myself. As you can tell, I still have all of this. I still use it all. And it's 
still in use. It's not something I've gotten rid of. In previous years, there was stuff I reviewed and it was okay. I didn't like stuff. I didn't like a lot of the stuff I reviewed and I don't have that stuff anymore. But for this past year, everything I reviewed this year is something I use myself and still have in the garage is still being used either on a bike or for storage or whatever that may be. So if you're interested in checking out any of these products, I'm gonna have a link to the playlist down below for all my reviews so you can check them out for yourselves. You can watch the reviews, see what you think for yourself, see if it's something you wanna pick up. If you enjoyed the video or at least found it entertaining, give this video a big thumbs up, appreciate the support. Any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Love talking to you guys, love answering any questions you guys have, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.